Okay. Uh, yeah, so to get started for this week, um, I think it makes sense. We are about to push our ask a question feature to production. So I think it makes sense to run through it on staging. Um, Pat, do you want me to do that or do you want to take the reins for a mini demo? Um, you should do it because my computer lags. I don't know when I share a screen. Okay, I have cool. video at the same time my computer starts to lag. So Cool. Yeah, let me pull it up right now. And so um, I'll just like go through the flow here. And then there are a couple like copy questions that uh, we want to get you guys ideas on. So here's our staging website. I don't know if you all have ever seen this before. It's like the uh, like practice version of the actual website we use at researchhub.com. Um, so here in the feed, you can sort by papers, which is like the traditional post actual scientific paper or a post which is the free form uh, new feature here. So these are all, they pretty much show up in the main feed just like a paper would um, with its own title and then a preview, uh, which is the actual text of the post. If you want to make your own new post, you would go up to this button here and then distinguish that you want to ask a question or start a discussion. Hmm. And then once you're here, you pick the hub. Um, the title. And then uh, you can ask a question or really any kind of post. Um, we're not 100% sure what people will do with this, but uh, we kind of want to keep it open uh, to see what type of behaviors people actually engage in. And then once that happens, uh, you're the author, um, and anybody else can comment on it and upvote. So that's sort of like the, um, I guess, like total flow for this feature. It ends up in the main feed here. Um, do you guys have, it's kind of like what we showed last week too, but do you all have any thoughts on just that overall, uh, like couple of screens? I wonder if there is would be a reason to make them more visually distinct from the paper posts, yeah. right? Because some people can have this criticism that they, you know, it, it, because otherwise people, you know, it would ruin the perceived quality of the papers. Maybe that is something we've discussed a lot. Of like, should we make something that distinguishes this post from a regular paper? Because right now they look exactly the same. So you can't really tell like whether something is someone a created post or it's a paper. And so I, my thinking behind this is we're going to like leave, we'll probably leave it for like a week like this. Um, because some people wanted it to be the same and then some people wanted it to be different. And so the easiest thing is if it's the same, we're just going to release it probably for a week, see how people feel about it and get like people's opinions and thoughts. If it feels like it's too demeaning towards the paper, like actual scientific papers, because a lot more work was put into them, then yeah, we're gonna have to make some visual distinction there. Um, so, I remember uh, last time we talked about having like when you post on Reddit, there can be flares on the post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I think it would be cool um, if we had like question or data set or methods or something like that. Just like a little flare here, I think yeah. would well and distinguish it well. Yeah, yeah. We can do something like that, but I want to leave it for now, like undistinguished, and then we go from there. Okay, cool. So, when it comes to this copy here, does this make sense to you all? Ask a question or start a discussion. All discussions must be scientific in nature. Ideas, theories, questions, the community are all welcome. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, doesn't make sense. Only one remark is that um, when you click um, new post, uh, it says upload a paper or ask a question. But then when you go back to the feed, it says that post is a different section. So now it's clear for me because you showed it. But when you click new post, uh. and it gives you an option between to choose between two options and on the feed is just one thing yeah that makes a lot of sense so there should be a different term right so paper as opposed to what non-paper post or something 
Yeah, I, I don't know, like something similar uh, to the ask a question kind of stuff. Because then if you click new post, you know, ah, yeah, uh, when I click the, the, the last option, I will create this kind of content. For me, it's, yeah, I, just as a new user, I think it might be quite... Um, Maybe... Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe we just call them discussions here in, in where you're, you know, instead of posts right here. Yeah, just call them Yeah, then maybe we should change that ask a question or start a discussion, just make it like discussion as well, the call to action. I like that because I think, you know, a discussion can easily be a question. That's how you start. Right. right. <laughs> maybe, what do you guys think about this uh, UI here? Like, do you like having these all separated with kind of three tabs? Or maybe, like, uh, posts could be, like, a drop-down filter? Do you all like Oh, no, please, please don't make them a drop-down filter. I think <laughs> not right now it's amazing. Cool. Yeah, totally agree. And so, in theory, you'd want to change this uh, copy to discussions right here? Mm hmm OK, yeah. cool. And then, so if we go into here, um, what do you all think about this copy? What can you post here? Ask a question, start a discussion about a certain topic, post a relevant photo to a hub. We can change that photo to more like, we can add some stuff, you know, like a post a data set, post conference paper, whatever, conference. Like a multimedia file or whatever. Yeah, it posts a video, whatever, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you might, right now it doesn't it, like when I read it, it did not look like you want my presentation here. It looked like you want the, you know, Comments. an image. Yeah, image. Yeah. yeah. So if you want it to be, maybe maybe post a file and then specify it can be a presentation, a scientific video, or an image like a graph or a photo that you took of a lizard that it's is really important for science or something. Yeah, I like that a lot. Those are all really good ideas. Um, and these guidelines make sense to you? Do you all think that this section is uh, necessary? Or maybe it would be better to just have like all of the different types of uh, research outputs you could post? Uh, the, the having two separate you know, paragraphs kind of makes sense. It makes it easier. Right? The, the, the top one is kind of like procedural, what can be uploaded. And the bottom one is how should you do it when you decide to, you know? Uh, for me, I would want to see, uh, and this is just me, I don't know about you guys, but uh, a drop down. So like uh, under title, uh, being able to choose which uh, which type of post I'm, I'm, I'm doing. So if it's a data set or if it's a conference paper or, or um, uh, or a poster or whatever. Yeah, I think that this is uh, probably related to the flare thing that um, Joyce and Pat were talking about, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I agree. It might be, I mean, it might be, I think, fine for now, but I think that was another uh, reason why I like the distinction between posts and discussions because it is easily easily upscalable. Like if eventually, if this is going to be really popular and you're going to have a lot of entries that are conference uh, presentations that are, um, you know, graphs that are data sets, and you will create you know, an entire new uh, category then right. you might consider creating like a whole new type of post. But for now, because there is not a lot of users, I think they should all be clumped together for now, maybe. This is probably a little bit in the future too, but uh, Kobe, it kind of reminds me of the UI that you had where you have like 
outputs here and then papers and Q and A and mm -hmm. data sets. And we could, we could have different tabs for all of the different flares mm -hmm. that we actually had. That might be too yeah. busy. Yes, that's exactly what right. I was describing just now, but for future, for future. Okay, cool. Yeah, this was really helpful. Thank you guys. Um, is there anything else in general about this feature? Any feedback that we can incorporate? So, um, preview and edit. <laughs> so I don't know where how this looks like when I'm posting. My concerns, right? And how yeah. like will I be edit this later? I don't think that's something that you're concerned about right now. But yeah, yeah like I want to edit. Oh, I have typo. I can't edit it right now. Right, right, right. When a post is edited, do you think it's important to have like a edited in parentheses? like Slack or um, some other social media sites have, or just let the author do whatever they want? I mean, I would prefer having edited thing. Yeah, I agree. I think it's like a safety thing, like uh, someone replies to something that has changed completely, and now it's like whatever they're saying is totally out of context. So uh, I think it's a good idea. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's basically mandatory. To be honest, for the reasons Corby described, and I wonder if if you if you remember this whole idea with living papers that you can modify and update and just have the you know version history. Maybe if the person introduces a large amount of edit, you know, to the comment, it can kind of like mer uh, fork into two separate discussions. You know, like if. If, if eventually in the comments, they, it, it turns out that the, the question was actually slightly different than what was originally uh, thought, and the person goes and, and updates the uh, original post, maybe they can, uh, probably too much hassle to have like a version history for the post. I, I think we actually have code for version history that we used for the summary section initially. So I don't know if that's like salvageable. We, we do have code for version history here too. We just haven't implemented it yet. Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably uh, you know far, far in the future type of thing. But you know, ultimately, if you guys will be able to do it one day, that's going to be a huge plus, I think. So if you can, please save the code to do it. <laughs> yeah, we we have we have we set up this feature so it can do it too. We just haven't implemented it yet. So perfect. Yeah. Cool. And so uh, the next thing I want to talk about was uh, Anton's feedback from this morning um, regarding making discussions more discoverable. Anton, do you mind just kind of quickly say what you were thinking with that comment, and then we can chat about it more in depth? Right. So as you might have experienced yourself right now, is if you log in in Research Hub, it's kind of hard to figure out where you, you, know, where you should be, where the discussion is at. Because right now, it's a little barren. So uh you would probably want to be you know in the center of, of the action but it's really hard to tell where it is and uh, i was wondering if we could replace the uh, latest activity sidebar on the right with uh, something that's more similar to you know youtube homepage, you know where it would be composed every time it's like you refresh the page it would be composed with let's say 10 comments or pages that are currently experiencing you know, the most traffic or they have the most supported comments or it has a you know, recent uh, discussion that you know, some the algorithm thinks that it's gonna continue or something like that. You know? And it doesn't need to be the latest activity. I think it needs to be more encompassing. Like it, I think you know, it gives you it could give the you know the developers a big uh, freedom in, in in investigating what people are interested in, right? So you can sneak in. Sometimes you could sneak in a few of the comments from like several months ago and see if it still holds up, if it still attracts people's attention, if it's rediscovered by a large number of people, you know. And you can play around with it. You can have a few comments from this week, a few comments from the last week, a few comments from like years ago, a few pages, I don't know. It can be filled up with anything that sounds promising, you know. 
So just to drill into this uh, a little bit further, um, do you mind talking about the value difference between what you're describing and the most discussed filter that we currently have going by like this week or this month or this year? Right, so the most dis like, like you mentioned in the discussions, first of all, most discussed uh, is, uh, is, is a rather straightforward metric. It wouldn't, I don't, I don't think it's a great predictor of whether it's gonna be a nice place for you to land and start a discussion, right? If it has, you know, a lot of uh, comments, but not a lot of upvotes, that's probably not represented in the discussion filter, right? Or, or is it? Like, I don't know how this discussion filter is set up, but I also think that the important thing is that you are, as, as you know, as a developers of research hub, you can kind of like direct the attention of the users. It doesn't need to be the most discussed paper, but you can make it the most discussed paper if it all of a sudden happens to be on this trending list of all the users at the same time, right? So. Right now, I think the problem is that the users are are spread thin, right? So they all have their hubs or whatever. So you can change that by redirecting them here and there towards the same, you know, shared uh, interest or whatever. And I think it's you know more more obvious and less work, and uh, go, then going through the filters. Yeah. So just to repeat it back to make sure that uh, I understand, rather than displaying like uh, the most commented posts, it would almost be like we have a flashlight to direct attention to whatever we think should be the most commented in the future or people would be most interested in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And I think um, like in the, in the future, we can also add like a personalized like part to it where it's like not just uh, uh, what we want to like put a flashlight on, but like what do we want to show like Anton specifically based on his prior interests? Yes, absolutely. So I, I would, and I don't know how it's done in big companies like YouTube, but I'm pretty sure there is, you know, similar logic to it, right? So some of the, some of the, uh, items that are going to be, you know, pushed to all the users are going to be common for everyone, just maybe because we feel like, you know, it's such a big hit that everyone should see it, but maybe some other will be personalized, right? And, and out of, let's say, if there are 10 items on the list, it's up to you, right, to set it up and, you know, and decide how many of those are going to be targeted to you specifically, how many of those are going to be uh, research hub wide, how many of those are going to be new comments. And those tweaks are all, I think they're very promising to play with, right? And you, you guys are, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, we can track it in like, um, I'm thinking we can probably track it in amplitude unless we do it already and, and get a sense of what people want to, like what are people clicking on the most. Yeah, it's like a nice, it's a nice thing to, to get a sense of what people are excited about. And, and I agree with Anton, it doesn't have to be time-based, but maybe to start off, we can take what Anton said and have it time-based and then like maybe loosen up the time, um, you know, criteria. But yeah, uh, all good ideas here. One thing I really like about this idea is um, I think it presents a value prop to researchers if we hit them up and say like, hey, we want you to do an AMA, you know, and we'll guarantee that you'll be on the front page for a week and that all of our users will see your paper and we'll try and direct them to this discussion to participate. And so I, I think that's pretty cool, like as a cold email to a researcher who wants more attention on their paper. Um, mm. So you're thinking, Joyce, that like an AMA an ongoing AMA or like just an AMA that has happened uh, will show up in the sidebar as well, like um, as opposed to like in the homepage in a, like an AMA section. Yeah, I, I think like Anton's saying, like we could shine a light on specific posts and that might just be whatever people are discussing at the moment, but it could also be like manually we set up events 
that like will say, hey, researcher, this is worth your time to pay attention to this because we're going to direct X mm -hmm. traffic towards your paper of cool people who want to like talk to you about it and potentially maybe cite it later. Yeah, and you can you can kind of condition I think the researchers to do desirable behaviors, right? So what you what would be the actions you would want the most from the authors of the papers to do, right? You would probably want them to be active in the comments. You would probably want them to provide the uh, you know unlicensed version of the text. You probably want them to you know do other things. And all of those things, they don't necessarily need to guarantee that you are in this list, right? Because, you know, that's not upscalable, right? If you have 10K researchers, they can't all be in there. But it can increase the likelihood of getting in this list every time people refresh the page, right? So that's, I think, is good enough. Cool. Does anybody else have any uh, ideas, thoughts on this topic before we move on? So the last thing that I want to talk about, um, and then there's a couple other things after, if we have extra time, but um, we spoke last week about having like a, a manual RSC program for like power users um, who, you know, would get like extra bonus RSC that we would just send to their wallets if they like did specific actions. And so um, the way I'm thinking about this is uh, almost like a, a big time trial and error experiment where like on a weekly basis, we can come back every Tuesday and be like, hey, what's working? What's not working? What should we tweak? And we can kind of like uh, experiment to find the right incentive structure that we can then scale up by actually having it like within the app. So I have like a, a very um, beginning uh, incentive structure and want to get your feedback on it. And please feel free to just make fun of this and let me know if this is like actually something that would drive your behavior. Um, so we could just set up like a uh, Google Doc or like a Google spreadsheet and say, hey, if you comment our, on three papers and post three papers, you get 300 RSC at the end of a seven day period, five and five, 600, seven and seven, 1200. And then uh, we could also do something where like every Tuesday we get together and vote on the best comment of the week. And then that uh, gets an additional 1200. Um, so yeah, curious what you think about these numbers. It's pretty simple to get started, um, but yeah, any any ideas or criticisms? Uh, can you describe the mechanism for nominating the best comment? Because if let's say it's 10, 10 of our users, seven comments, so it's going to be seventy comments. So should we vote on all seventy of them, or how does it work? I was just thinking just in this call, we could we could all like maybe uh, I could put together a list of my top five or something like that. And then we could all vote on it or something. It could really be whatever you guys wanted. I thought uh, this would be a nice incentive to um, instead of just saying like, oh, hey, great paper. You know, I really enjoyed this, like something where the comment is more in depth because there might be some big pot at the end of the rainbow if everybody also really enjoyed the more in depth comment. Yeah, that's what I meant. So right now, you know, you are nominated personally, right? So, but that's not sustainable. That's not upscalable. I like this idea, but eventually we will need some sort of judges, maybe that are not part of the uh, power users. So they are they, they're not affiliated or they're not friends or whatever. That they can go through this comments and select like the top five or whatever. So, so how do you? What mechanism do you think would work best in like this kind of manual paradigm? Uh, just to test it out? Uh, I think, like I said, the, the easiest way to implement right now would be to have a separate power user, not power user, meta user or something that is also going to be rewarded for reading all these comments, but will not be part of the uh, vote. Right? And their only goal would be to nominate top five comments or top 10. Hmm. Okay, that makes sense. So, like a kind of like neutral power user that nominates. Yeah, uh, power uh, power um, user committee or something. <laughs> okay. Yeah, actually, now that I think about, it, maybe they should do the entire thing. We shouldn't vote on our own comments, maybe. Oh, so it's just like a like a editorial committee nominate. Yeah. And internally, okay. right? 
we you, we can also see if like the upvoting on comments gives any kind of distinction. It's not mm. clear if that will, right? Because maybe people don't upvote the comments and everything's at one. But if it actually does create distinction, like it could just be like, hey, we look at the top ten upvoted comments and then just vote on those or whatever. We can have both because it's it, this uh, criterion can be sometimes unfair, right? Because some right. Of the papers are just intrinsically not as interesting or right. whatever. But right. we can do both. We can have you know half the prize goes to top uh, editorial committee picks, and another half goes to you know user selected. Yeah, this is honestly ideal because I feel like this is exactly the point where we can try something, see if it works, and then iterate, you know, based mm -hmm. on what's working, not working. Pat, I really like that idea of starting with upvotes because that's so easy. You know, it's yeah. really easy to just be like, oh, hey, what were the 10 most upvoted comments? Right. You know, and I can share them in a Google Doc before this call. Right, right, right. And so that way everybody can look at them. And then, like, if that's clearly, like, causing some bias or people are commenting on, like, only, like, THC and like MDMA papers and stuff like that, then we can, you know, try something else in order to make it a little bit more fair. The the only bias I can see right now, and obviously we can just get started and see how it goes, is uh, time sensitivity. So I'm thinking, what if someone submits a comment at the very end of the week? It's a great comment, yeah. but maybe you've not received as many upvotes. Yeah. So maybe like a yeah, we can just use the, the the top vote as like a huge indicator, plus maybe some other comments that can be nominated in addition. So if the vote is on Tuesday, then the smart move would be to upload all seven papers on Wednesday, right? Next exactly. Wednesday, immediate. So how about we make it a little bit more fair and make it that you have to upload like not not all at the same time, but you know one per day. Right, that would be more fair and probably better for the website, right? I, so the way that I'm thinking about this is um, simplest first, and then we'll we'll see what happens because it might be that like everybody rushes out of this call and immediately posts you know papers. But I have a feeling that's probably it. it maybe a couple people will, but I, I think it will end up being more distributed. So um, I could be totally wrong, but uh, I think it makes sense to just do something simple and then reassess next week and see what's working, what's not working, go from there. All right, how, how do people join the Power User Crew? So I think uh, everybody who's a mod, we can already have them automatically in the crew. Um, I'm writing a blog post now to kind of like, uh, uh, it's like a call to arms in order to get people to post more papers and post more comments. So at the bottom of that, there'll be like a Google like survey where people can sign up to be power users. And then like, I'll get on a phone call with them, you know, introduce myself, say what's up, tell them to come to our community call. And then, uh, yeah, so we can try and like bring more people in from that blog post too, but, but starting out with this group here and then probably the open source development group as well. What do you all think about the rewards? Do you think these are uh, appropriately sized? It's hard to know because there isn't like a value or anything really. Um, but just compared to like the rewards you'd get from posting a paper, they're they're probably like twenty five x something like that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, yeah. Any any last thoughts on this program in general? So what's the one thing that we're testing here? Like, is this only about the like whether people are sensitive to reward or not? Like, yeah. I think the end goal is to come up with a V2 of our incentive structure in general. And so we're going to start it off with a small sampling of like power users. So people who are basically like in the room helping to influence the rewards and then see what works on that small sample and uh, eventually build it into the application kind of like Anton had suggested like a month or so ago with like, you know, gamified reward structures that encourage people to participate on a daily basis um, and have it be open to anyone who uses the app or wants to be like a verified power user submitting like their academic email or claiming a paper or something. 
Um, but but yeah, the idea is to test out a baseline incentive structure to refine it and then eventually scale it up to um, something that's actually within the application, reminding people to post every day. OK, so the success is everybody posts every day. Yeah, ideally, like having having start to generate that conversation. That is probably the most interesting thing that when a new person comes to Research Hub, they say, oh, look, there are like smart people talking about smart things here. I want to join in. So I'll sign up and make a comment as well. Maybe you should specify what kind of comment it should be, right? So you post a paper and you leave a comment on that paper and maybe make it try to make this comment like welcoming other people into the discussion or asking a question or describe or like giving a brief summary of the paper. Like what do you want it to be? What do you think? Kind of my thought here was um, the nice part is we're all a tight group. So if somebody is like trying to scam the system, you know, we'll all know. And like there'll be a little bit of like, you know, like social discouragement of that type of behavior. Um, but yeah, I can definitely include instructions in the blog and then on the Google Sheets too, saying like, hey, here's exactly what we want. But part of me feels like um, it'll be interesting to see what the comments are. Like Anton, your comments the past couple of days have been like pretty interesting. And they're not necessarily like about the paper itself, but more about like the topic in general. So yeah, I, I kind of just want to see what people do and then, uh, you know, reassess as a group and say, hey, is this what we're looking for? Is this interesting? You know, should we try and push it in another direction? OK. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, thank you guys for your feedback. This is super helpful. Uh, do you all have anything else in general just on the project so far? And just one remark on the last last thing we discussed. Um, I really like all the ideas, but the only the feeling I'm getting is like when you're voting for like the best comment, then yeah, actually it's for me like ah, is that research hub because. For me, it was like uh, open source community. We want to get away from all editorial boards. And now we're creating one ourselves. And then it's like, ah, uh, but then it's not like what the community likes, but it's more like the, the select people like. And then they vote. And then, like, as an outsider, you might get a feeling like, ah, oh, yeah, uh, they choose uh, what they like. Uh, maybe their friends, they upvote it. I, I mean, I, I like all the ideas, but that's maybe a feeling some people will get. And I love that you brought that up, Philip. Thank you. I think that's like, uh, it's pretty important to make sure that we don't do that long term. Um, I think the goal of this, and you guys let me know if this is maybe like um, antithetical to what we're trying to do with Research Hub, but the goal here is to like, do a small scale experiment to figure out what we can scale up to the entire community. And I think uh, the reason why it's within this tight knit group is just because you all have, you know, put in the time and effort compared to the average user. So uh, the feedback that we get from you guys in theory is going to be uh, more actionable than the whole group or the community in general. So it'll start off small, but then, um, you know, there would not be like an editorial board making these decisions once we actually build it into the application. Like it would, it would be decentralized. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's. I mean, it's a great idea for in the beginning, but definitely leads some uh, review in the future. Yeah, definitely. And then Philip, if we do end up going in that direction, make sure that you publicly make fun of me because that's not what we're trying to do. So, so like, if it does end up going in that direction, remind me that that's not the mission of Research Hub. So like, I, I very much appreciate you kind of like checking us there and making sure that we stay you know, on the mission of what we're trying to accomplish. So I definitely appreciate that. Cool. Well, thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining. Really appreciate it. Till next Thank week. You. Bye. See ya.